So I'm here today with Alex Sidorenko. Um, he's a distinguished risk manager, and uh, you can uh, stop the video if you want to see his credentials uh, or my credentials. Uh, we've worked together for a while, and we're, uh, I would say, uh, comrades in arms in the war on averages. Um, and today we're going to discuss the uh, Open SIPMath 3.0 standard or as I like to think of it, the probability power grid. And uh, we, we both think that this has a chance of really revolutionizing risk management. Well, I, I think it's stronger than that. I think we're both certain sooner or later it will. <laughs> uh, we, we're just uncertain about the time frame. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so here's an outline of what we'll be discussing today. Uh, the problem is the flaw of averages, which, uh, if you're not aware of this, it's the equivalent of representing the uncertainty of rolling a die with a flat die with three and a half dots on each side, because three and a half is the average number that comes up on a die. And you can imagine the disasters that occur when you do that. Um, the solution is chanceification, where we, in effect, do for probability what uh, electrification did for electricity. And then we're going to discuss the open technology, which is the SIPMath 3.0 standard. Uh, this can express millions of simulation trials in under in 100, 100 bytes. bytes. Um, um, it sounds it like it violates like information theory. No, no, you can't compress 100 million numbers into, you know, in, into 100 bytes, but you can express the random number generator that way, and that's uh, all we really need. And then we're going to talk about um, a use case. So let's start with the flaw of averages. Uh, uh, many of you may be aware of the statistician who drowns in the river uh, that's on average three feet deep. This is sort of the classic. Um, and what, what the flaw of averages says is that plans based on average assumptions uh, are wrong on average. So we're going to start with a particularly egregious example of the flaw of averages. Uh, this represents the time to failure of four aircraft parts. No, I mean, th these problems appear everywhere in project scheduling, in demand for uh, products and so on. But um, this particular case is really uh, quite egregious. So uh, in worrying about aircraft dependability, people often refer to the mean flight hours before failure of a part. And uh, so here we have four parts. And sure, they don't fail on a regular basis. They fail randomly. And so what we record is, on average, how many hours do they fly before they fail? And uh, now, if any of these parts fails, then the plane is grounded. So the important thing to see here is that the plane is grounded at the minimum of any of these numbers. And like, let's suppose instead of uh, 400 hours, uh, that one failed at 40 hours, well, then the plane fails at 40 hours. And uh, the, the key, of course, is that these numbers are uncertain, and we've plugged in the averages. So here's the problem. Uh, notice that part three is the one that uh, has the lowest uh, mean flight hours before failure of 383 hours. And so therefore, we, sh we show the plane here grounded at 383 hours. But let's remember, these are uncertain. So we've plugged in the averages. And, and trust me, by plugging in the average failure times, we are, uh, we're stepping right on the landmine of the flaw of averages. Yes, indeed. Well, and this example is, is, is quite universal as well, because it could be 
four, four pieces of equipment in the chemical plant. It could be four um, pieces of uh, or, or components of a particular high uh, importance plant. So this this logic, this this example is really applicable to most business operational problems. Where the flaw of averages starts is when the boss says, give me a number. So the boss comes in and says, when will the plane be grounded? And uh, you say, I don't know, boss, because I don't know how long these parts will last. And the boss will say, give me a number, right? And so the typical response is, well, if you need a number, uh, the minimum uh, time to failure on average is 383. So, hey, I'd say we'll fly around 383 hours. But you can't hold me to that because it's uncertain, right? And so in chanceification, when the boss says, uh, give me a number, we're, we're going to say, what do you want it to be, boss? Here are your chances, right? And the, and the boss in this case says, well, I want it to fly 383 hours. And so during the course of these uh, videos, we're going to determine the chance that it flies 383 hours. But I think it would be a good idea for you to write down on a piece of paper right now what you think the chance is will fly 383 hours. Mm -hmm. And actually, I was I was thinking about um, you know this uh, this question you know what do you want it to be, boss? And uh, um, I, I know it's it's illustration only, but I think this question is actually quite important because normally our response would be is well, what's the minimum we could afford? And what does the shareholder want it to be? And what's the maximum you can afford without sacrificing, you know, your annual bonus? Or what are the bank covenants uh, telling us it to be? So that there are a lot of different internal and external uh, limitations or restrictions on what is a good risk reward performance. And all of those hypotheses are testable using what you're going to discuss next. Well, Alex, that's exactly right. So it turns out as soon as you start, you know, as soon as you join the chance age, there are trade-offs everywhere. You know, we, we know you can't be 100% certain of anything. And exactly right. And once you have the trade-offs, so I, I want to play back what you said here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number one, they're going to be trade-offs. You're going to have to give up things. It'll cost you more to have a greater chance of flying so long and so on. Not only that, you've got different stakeholders. And so when you start taking a chance informed point of view, it opens the door to intelligent management involving all your stakeholders. When you use the average, it, well, exactly. it's back to using the flat dice. <laughs>